And Steve Scalise, uh, House member from Louisiana, House Republican whip. Steve Scalise, you're in a tough crowd here <laughs> with Steve Forbes and Steve Moore. It's a very, very rough crowd. I'm going to do the best I can to protect <laughs> you from these guys. But I was just going to ask, and not that you need protection. So I just want to ask, I want to go to you first, Steve Moore. They you just have the three Steves here. So no, well, he's been, but it's he's, a Steve fest, Larry. He's, yeah, I guess it is. Actually. So there hasn't been enough discussion of the one point five trillion dollar omnibus bill mm -hmm. that was just passed by both houses. OK, mm -hmm. but 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 I want to say I'm in favor of the military spending, mm -hmm. particularly now. I'm in favor of the Ukraine spending, but obviously now I'm not in favor of the domestic spending, and I'm absolutely startled by two things. Not once in this discussion did anyone talk about pay-fors. Mm -hmm. okay, I don't really want to pay for it, but I'm just saying, with deficit spending last March, we should have learned a lesson. Right. Build Back Better should have learned a lesson. And then comes the earmarks, yeah. $8 billion worth of earmarks, which I thought we had buried hmm. and put a stake through 10 years ago. Now, I'm going to... Let you speak, okay. and then I want uh, Mr. Scalise to address So it. the increase in the spending for Ukraine should have been dollar for dollar offset by reductions in the domestic spending budget. Right. You know, it's Brad's for, <laughs> we needed the, the military spending, so we should have cut. Steve Scalise, what I favor from Republicans is a 10% across the board reduction in domestic spending now. We spent 3 to $4 trillion. We put ourselves in a big big uh, hole. I would love to see Republicans get tough on spending. What you think, Steve Scalise? Yeah, and the most important thing is to stop paying people not to work. Stop That's all true. this quote unquote stimulus, just the flood of money that was going in to to pay people to replace work. And I think you're finally seeing that attitude, not only amongst us, but Joe Manchin's definitely in this camp, too. And so what you need to do and you think about defense, I mean, we're going to say Biden didn't want to properly fund defense. And by doing short term bills on defense, it actually costs our nation's defense about a billion dollars a month that we lose in the ability to do any kind of long term planning. And so that now at least is resolved. But look, Biden still doesn't get it on Ukraine. He doesn't want to give them the help. You know, they're, they're having this fight over the MiGs and it's Poland's MiGs. It's not even American planes. Now, America would come behind and backfill NATO's planes that they would give to Ukraine. But Biden doesn't even want to help them with that. He dithered for months on the surface to air missiles that they were asking for. Imagine if back in October, Zelensky, when he started asking for surface to air missiles, were able, was able to get it before Russia invaded. A lot of this bombing you're seeing, just leveling of cities and killing people like genocide, uh, would have been able to be prevented because they would have been able to train the Ukraine military to use those kind of weapons. They can't even get a lot of those weapons in right now because it's a war zone. So all of these are signs that President Biden continues to have this attitude of, well, he doesn't want to help Ukraine too much because he might offend Putin. Stop funding Putin's war by opening up energy in America. We should be drilling in every part of the country we can to lower prices and take Putin's leverage away. Biden won't do that either. About Rick Perry's idea, Steve Scalise, that instead of sending diplomats to Iran and to um, Venezuela, we should send a special envoy to uh, Midland, Texas, where they could meet the oil and gas industry right. and maybe draw up a and peace treaty. And you don't even need to beg them. <laughs> you don't even need to beg them. He's begging dictators to replace one dictator in Putin with other dictators in Iran and Venezuela. Stop begging dictators. The answer's beneath our feet. Uh, Midland would be happy to do it in Port Fouchon in South Louisiana. They're ready to go. They know how to do it safely. By the way, more environmentally friendly than anywhere else in the world. So they talk about carbon emissions. The places they're trying to beg, like Iran and Venezuela, emit more carbon than if you made it in America. These people are wrong on every front. Make it in America. You'll lower the cost and you'll lower carbon emissions. You know, stop hanging out with these Green New Deal frauds who say, oh, don't drill in America, and then they force you to drill in places like Russia and Iran who emit more carbon. It's lunacy. And you stand up to Putin. You would stand up to Putin. And you take money out of his pocket. Put our best Hundreds foot forward. Hundreds of millions of dollars right. a day Putin is pocketing off of oil sales. And a higher price, by the way, benefits Putin. Stop buying him from him and stop buying from other dictators. Yes, sir. Steve Scalise, thank you. Appreciate it very much. Thanks very much.